they're both so challenging. Like regardless of which path you're going to choose, they're both so challenging. But for me personally, as a mother, and because I, I wanted to have that flexibility, the entrepreneurial life was going to be more suited to me. So this is why we have to understand ourselves. We have to go do that work. I'm like, hmm, well, what makes me tick? What are my values? What are my strengths? Welcome to the Kind Boss Podcast, brought to you by Outsourcing Angel, an Australian-based social enterprise that specializes in helping business owners free up their time and reduce staffing costs, while helping to create employment opportunities for people in developing countries. Visit OutsourcingAngel.com today. Now, let me welcome your host, Lynn Pedetti. Hello, kind listeners. I'm your host, Lynn Pedetti. Today, we'll be speaking to a kind boss, Masia Miyaki, a leadership and emotional intelligence consultant, executive coach, international best-selling author, host of the Hustler's Guide to Flow podcast, female empowerment enthusiast, and conscious mother of two. Masia transformed her life to overcome adversity, being born into poverty, adoption, and drug addiction, to build her career and business while nurturing her love and family life. Masia is certified in leading and emotional intelligence, was awarded a full academic scholarship to complete her doctorate, and has research experience in leadership, emotional intelligence, and change. She was awarded the Zonta International Woman in Business Scholarship and is a fully certified law of attraction coach. Listen on as she shares her insights into how we can have it all and experience more love, success, and fulfillment by healing emotional wounds. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Kind Boss Podcast. And today I have my friend all the way from Perth, Marcia Miaki. I hope I pronounced your surname right. Perfect. <laughs> welcome. welcome. Thanks so much for having me. It's an yeah. honor. No worries. Well, you had me on your podcast and I couldn't wait to do it back because I felt that we just had so much in common in terms of our upbringing and our passion for woman empowerment because it's more than just being successful in business. It's really about this kind of, you know, both of our beliefs is around great relationship, great health, great everything and great business. So that's why I wanted to have to chat with you today. I would love that. I love all of those things. So I'm super excited. Cool. I do want to go back a little bit about your passion. Like where did it come from around this topic in particularly around helping women? It's so funny because ever since I was young, I've been like obsessed with becoming successful. I don't know what that even means, but it was always this thing like, and my mom told me that when I was maybe like seven, I said to her, like I looked up at her and I'm like, um, one day I'm going to be really, really successful and I'm going to be able to look after you. And that kind of like stuck with me. And so for, you know, many years that was business. So I have a business degree. I went and did an honors and then I started doing a PhD as well. And I worked in higher education. And so I was in strategy and strategic planning and business analysis and all that more hard stuff in business. And what I noticed was that my managers would gravitate towards me and would tell me things, tell me things about their personal life and, and all of that. And I remember going on a business trip once with one of the leaders in, in the business that I was in. And this person started telling me like their challenges in terms of their career and started sharing more personal things. And I got really involved in this person's re relationship. And it was so interesting that I was like, I really like talking to these leaders. I actually enjoy talking to these leaders and helping them with their career kind of on the side more than doing the strategic planning and the business analysis and competitor intelligence and all of these things. So. I was like, I would really like to dive more into the space. And so I went and got a coaching certification and started working with executives. And a lot of what the work that I did was helping them, you know, move higher up in their organizations. But what I found was oftentimes the challenges that they thought were the business challenges 
had an underlying personal challenge. It was maybe a challenge in their relationship at home that was holding them back. So there's all these like personal elements that we don't really address in business that were actually holding them back. So then I was really excited about just coaching executives and all of that. And it wasn't until I became a mother. And I know that sounds so crazy that I realized, hmm, women have unique challenges. Women do business differently. Women, like we are in a business world. It was not created for women. It's not created for our feminine energy. And we're so involved in the hustle. And don't get me wrong, I love, you know, the grind. And like, for me, that's exciting but there's also an element of the feminine that's neglected in that and if a woman isn't a great hustler and if a woman isn't doesn't have all those masculine traits then maybe she she thinks that she can't make it in business and i was like how can i support women who really want to create incredible lives who want to have it all how can i do that because right now like i didn't think that there was something that addressed all of those issues, like the professional and the personal. And so that's how I really got into the space when I just realized women in the corporate world have different challenges and we need to start addressing those challenges and we need to come up with solutions that are female focused. And yeah. so that's the work that I do now. Yeah. And so how do you find, so you, you, so you used to work with executives that are working in corporations. So it's kind of a different world. And then also entrepreneurs as well, right? So female entrepreneurs where we might have more flexibility, but it's kind of uncertainty and there's kind of, it's a different kind of thing. So how would you describe the two places? Cause I think I do have some friends in, in kind of high paying jobs and they don't have a life too, you know, and it, it's even harder to be a, a mum and working in an executive job that they think is safe. So yeah, what is the contrast between those kind of two types of women? Oh my gosh. Okay. So it's funny. I had this conversation like literally the other day is that they're both so challenging like regardless of which path you're going to choose, they're both so challenging. But for me personally, as a mother, and because I, I wanted to have that flexibility, the entrepreneurial life was going to be more suited to me. So this is why we have to understand ourselves. We have to go do that work. I'm like, hmm, well, what makes me tick? What are my values? What are my strengths? You know, there are people that would really thrive in the corporate world as executives and they should do that. They should not jump on the bandwagon of entrepreneurship because it's the cool thing right now mm -hmm. and that they're, they're going to get to be at home and chill out all day. No, I think you and I can both attest to like our calendars are full. We are constantly, you know, like it is more the difference. The key difference is, the woman who's working as an entrepreneur needs to be very disciplined. I would say so even more, and I'd be open to debate, but even more than someone in the corporate. And I'll tell you why, because when you have a job to go to in the office and you have people to report to, they are your accountability. When you have a report due on Friday because your boss needs to present it, that is your accountability when you are an entrepreneur, those lines of accountability get really blurred. You don't have anybody to answer to. Mm -hmm. So you can fall into this trap of, oh, I've got all day and oh, I'll just relax today. And things, because you don't have that, that structure that an organization provides you, if you do not have that discipline, if you do not have those rituals in place to make yourself succeed, then you're not going to be successful. So what I find is that the, the women that are entrepreneurs, especially the ones that are mothers, are incredibly disciplined because they are, again, they're very strategic because there's times where you have to make the call. I actually had a call with a client the other day about this, uh, creating time. She wanted to create balance within her career and family. And I said, to be honest, there's no such thing. You can't have, if you want to be successful in your business, there is not balance, there's harmony. So you need to find what balance looks like to you because what it looks like to you, Lynn and me could be completely different, We're probably more similar. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and, and there's going to be times when you do have to sacrifice going to see your child's recital or whatever, even though it's not 
ideal. And then there's times where you can be like, you know what, my child is my focus. I can feel energetically that like my child really needs me right now. And you can put things in and delegate things to other people on your team. So I think the biggest difference for sure is that you have to be incredibly disciplined as a female entrepreneur because you only have yourself to answer to. Yeah. I love that the way you explained it and it, it's so kind of wise and makes sense because it's, it really depends on the person. Like you really have to understand yourself, your values. Like for me and you probably it's around like freedom, flexibility. And so there is no other choice. We're like, we have to do entrepreneurship, even though it's hard, but other women, we have to respect that there's all different values as well. And so the next point I want to make is around kind of motherhood as well. Cause I think there's a struggle between, you know, both me and you were very ambitious, very like, okay, you know, like yourself, I was like, I want to be successful. I want to be this, but then there's that other side, but we also want to be a great, great mom and great wife and all that. And, and so do you find that that is a very common for women to kind of feel like, yeah, like stretch in, in so many places. Yes. And there's this like underlying belief that you have to choose, that you have to choose. And that if I want to be a career woman, that means I'm not going to have kids or I'm going to be a really distant and cold mother. Or if I'm a mother and I'm a nurturing mother and I'm a really supportive wife to my husband, then I can't really have a career for myself. And I'm calling BS on all of it. And, you know, as women, we've kind of been sold this lie and we bought into it. And I think you can have both. And I think you can have that and that and that too. You can have everything you want, but it means you have to be willing to look at things differently. Just as I said with the earlier question is that some days it means like, oh, I for some reason, I couldn't give it my all today because my child really needed me in this time. And so you have to make, and I don't even want to use the word sacrifice because I feel like that's a cop out for saying that, you know, like I had to sacrifice this. So we use it. Our children had to sacrifice my career. And I had to, so I don't like using that word. What I like to say is you make a strategic decision in the moment. So oftentimes like I've structured my day around my work and then I, 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 have my family time, obviously night routine, all these things are really important to me. But like, if something happens in the business out, like out of my control, and it was just something I could have never planned for, then I will make that call to be like, okay, my business needs me right now. I'm going to go in and do work at 7 PM when I ordinarily would be with my kids. I'm going to make that decision, but then I'm not going to beat myself up for it as well because as women this is where we we fall into this trap of like oh i sacrifice time with my child like i'm a really crappy mother we need to let go of that notion and be like that was a isolated incident and i'm i'm making the right decision for me and for my family and so when we stop putting so much unrealistic pressure on ourselves as women we can really hold to the truth that we can have both we can yeah. we're meant to have it all we we came into this life to like experience it all like why not try like we need to be more light about it like it's not the end of the world you know like and and as a mother guys who who does a lot of like healing work and inner child work like regardless of what a perfect mother you think you want to be as a stay-at-home mom your child will still have stuff that they need to heal from regardless of how good of a job you do. So take that freaking pressure off of yourself. This is the life experience. They're going to experience things. So once you take that pressure off that you have to be this like, like helicopter mother that is always around and is always doing this and always doing that, then you have more freedom to step into your power as the woman that you are for your calling. Maybe it's to create something different. And you are leading by your example to your children to put themselves first, to follow their dreams. We can't tell our kids to follow their dreams and then you're not following yours. That's, that's inauthentic. And our children feel our energy. They're not hearing our words. They're completely feeling our energy. So yeah, I think like we can definitely have it all and we just need to lighten up a little bit as women. Okay. Yeah. I love it. And I think it starts, I agree. It's starting with believing that you can have it all. So then you kind of make it work. So then how do you actually balance everything? So I know we're similar. We have, you know, a husband and kids and, and business and stuff. What is kind of your morning routine or weekly routine? Or how do you make sure that you have time for everything 
because I guess you chose that way because you know that it makes you as a whole person happy, right? Like you said, it's not all about business or money. It's about everything else. So how do you balance it all? Yeah. I love this question. And ordinarily I would have like, like an awesome answer, but right now I have to be honest because I have a four month old who, who throws my morning routine like completely <laughs> out the window, but I know it's temporary and I don't beat myself up for it. Right. So am I performing at my highest level right now? No. Do I have it all together right now? No, because I chose to also have a family. Does that make sense? Yes. So as my child gets older, I'll be able to have more of my routine. But what routine does work for me in the morning is to always do my gratitudes, always do my meditation and my stretching. So today my stretching looked like the baby mat beside me, my daughter eating her cereal on the floor beside me because she wanted to talk. And I've got my yoga mat there and I'm like, you know, trying to stretch and do all these things because it was important to me to fit that in. But I have to be realistic, the context of my current reality. So you and I have discussed morning rituals before and, you know, we are both so into that and I love your morning ritual. And what I would say on that is the reason our morning rituals are so important is that it sets, it's like that foundational work to do that sets the, the energy or the course or the frequency of the rest of your day. So if you can get that morning kind of together, looking in the way that you want it to feel, then the, your day is going to kind of flow from that. And as women, what that is, is, you know, just really nurturing yourself. So that gratitude bit is nurturing yourself. That meditation bit is nurturing yourself. That going to the gym bit is nurturing yourself. So nurture yourself first. As women, we need to remember, I come first, I nurture me, then I nurture you. If I don't nurture me first, I'm going to be trying to nurture my children, my husband, my business from already a weakened state. Mm. Does that make sense? So if yeah. we're coming from a place of service and what we want to do is be a great wife and what we want to do is be a great mother and what we do, what we want to do is be, be a great business owner. Well, I can only perform at my highest level if I'm like totally filled up my cup first and I'm just like bursting with energy. Yeah. So I think that's the importance of the morning ritual and doing the stuff that's important to you get that done first yeah i totally agree with you because i think sometimes people think that well i have a husband and he's there so that means i have a relationship but it's the quality of your relationship because if you're not happy and you're spending time for yourself then you're not you're going to take it out on him or your relationship is not that healthy and like you said as well like if you're not happy and you're in front of your kids and you're like you know snappy or whatever they are not going to have a great experience even though you're 24 7 with them and you, you're proud of being there it's how are you showing yourself to everything around your life so I really like that yeah I love what you said it's like how are we showing up to our kids how are we showing up to our partner because you know working with women what I see is and this is genuinely what I see I see women who have sacrificed their careers or have taken a big back seat um, for their husband. I see women who are at home with their kids and now their kids are getting a bit older and all of that. And there is an underlying feeling of resentment. And when you give up on your dreams or when you decide to push your dreams to the side, it will bubble up because those dreams came to you for a reason. They came to you for a reason. And it, it is your job to express them in whatever way that you are able to do. And when you deny yourself, that is, that is a, to me, it's an act of self betrayal when you don't go after what's yours. And when you betray yourself, eventually you start projecting that out and you start resenting your children. They didn't ask to be born. Okay. And you start resenting your husband. He didn't tell you not to step into your power. You could be the empowered woman and have told him, this is what's important to me. I, ha I have this passion. I really want to follow this. It's your responsibility to have the, the healthy and fulfilling relationship with your husband, not anybody else. So you, we have to take the responsibility for the lives that we've created right now. And what I would say to women is it's, it's never too late. Like it's not too late to really just go back and step into your power and like, and start asking, well, what is that business that I would love to do? Now I don't want to project and be like, it's gotta be business. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's like art or, or whatever it is, but what is it that 
lights you up that you will regret at the end of your life having not done. Want to make a difference in others' lives? Join us in providing food, medical supplies, and daily living necessities to tribal communities living in extreme poverty in the Philippines. For as little as $50, you can feed a whole village and have peace of mind that 100% of your donations goes directly to those in need. Be a part of our OA Love Projects and visit OutsourcingAngel.com. And like me, I, I thought that was too old to be an actor, right? And I shared it with you that I decided to do it at 36. But it's so liberating to kind of go for something that you kind of want and, and uh, to know that it's the only life, you, the only chance you have anyway. So it's never, ever too late because I think people get caught up with, but I've already done this or spent all these years in the, this career and, and I don't want to start again. Or I don't, there's just so much limiting beliefs. But anyway, before I go into the next section, I wanted to break it up with this activity called High Five. And it's five questions. You just have to choose between one or the other, this or that. And yeah, just elaborate a little bit so we understand and, and, and know how, how, how you think, you know. Okay. okay. So number one, Vegas or New York? New York. Just because we were meant to be in New York at the end of this year and now it's not happening. So really want to be going to New York. Have you been there before? No. And okay. I lived a couple hours away and I've never been <laughs> <What? laughs> Well, yeah, I'm curious to see how you feel about it because I had a really high perce- perception of it. Like I just, cause it was just so branded really well and it wasn't as I expected, but I'm curious to, to hear what you think anyway. That's funny that you say that because that you're not the first person. Okay. And so I think for me, probably energetically, it won't be a match just because I am a lot more like low key and it's very like out there, but I almost like just want a ticket yeah yeah i think yeah. when you travel with no expectation it's been the best whenever i've turned yeah. up to places and didn't expect anything it's actually better but when you have high hopes <laughs> it goes worse that's so true yeah. yeah all right second flowers or massage flowers i love flowers i love the the smell of them and they force me to be present to really appreciate them and i'm just not really a massage person it's weird uh, okay yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think I'm more on flowers. And I think massage, unless I'm in Thailand and it's really cheap, I would just go to massage all the time. <laughs> all right, number three, mangoes or strawberries? Mangoes, because they're, they're more rare, I guess. You see strawberries all the time. So I have more strawberries than I would have mangoes. Yeah, do you like the flavor more, mangoes too? I do, yeah. I like them and I feel like you can do a lot with them, you know? Yeah, yeah. I like it. Cool. Number four, kindness or generosity? I will say generosity only because I feel like generosity is also an act of kindness. Like for you to be truly generous, I think you need to be kind. So yeah. yeah. Yep. Love that. Finally, bungee jumping or skydiving? I'm going to say bungee jumping only because it's on my bucket list still and I've done skydiving loved it want to do it again but definitely want to do bungee jumping yeah same I've done skydiving it wasn't as scary as I thought and I heard that bungee jumping is a lot scarier because you're like yeah exactly falling. yeah I'm terrified I'm terrified I don't know why I even say it and I keep saying it so I guess I have to do it <laughs> <laughs> love it love it thank you so much for answering all those all right, let's get back to business again well not really business in this, in this sense but let's talk about kind of deep diving in our past because I think a lot of people are I don't know they're just not curious about themselves enough and like for me and you we just love exploring ourselves and and I find it why do you think that people kind of don't want or or yeah don't deep dive about themselves enough Oof, such a good question honestly I think they're scared they may use other language or other explanation but below that they're scared and then the other reason could be they're scared and they don't know, they, they see it as an unnecessary pain. Like, why would I go and delve deep into all of that and re bring that up? And like, they don't see the utility of going back there and actually healing that work and like all those wounds. And so I think it's fear and not knowing the benefit and how it will transform your life if you deep dive and get to know yourself. Yeah. And so what was your reason for deep diving? Because for me, I hit my bottom as in, you know, 
it took years and years of repeat mistakes and, 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 and having all these relationship problems and constantly until one day, one moment that I, after this one relationship, I kind of went, Oh my God, what's wrong with me? And I'm sick of these problems and, and, and drama. Then that was the first time I went searching for an answer for myself. And that's when I got into coaching because well, life coaching actually trying to be a coach, but it was more of a coaching for me. And that was my journey to personal development. And then I got addicted to it. So what was your journey? Oh, I love that. How you said you, you had all these relationships that weren't working and they were crappy. And then you said, well, what's wrong with me? And that's exactly it. We need to realize that we are the common denominator in all of our freaking problems. And, you know, I work with women that, that have the same pattern lots of like unhealthy relationships and they're like why does this guy like why do I keep attracting the same guy and it's like you know we attract what we are we don't attract what we want we say we want this like really like amazing guy who's done the work and da 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 but you haven't done the work so you're actually going to attract a guy who also hasn't done the work or you want a guy who knows how to love you and appreciate you but if you don't love and appreciate yourself first, then that guy can't actually show up into your existence. So it's like, it's, it's a really crazy, you know, like scenario where we, we just don't understand. But for me, I've always been really, really curious. Like ever since I was little, I was always questioning things and I would be so just couldn't pay attention in class, was just in my own little world. And my mom told me once a story when I was really small, the teacher was like annoyed and was like, Marcia, what are you doing? Because I'd be like daydreaming and I'm like, I'm just contemplating life. And I didn't actually know what that meant. I said it because my mom used to make fun of me for daydreaming all the time. She's like, what are you doing contemplating life? And I, maybe I was, you know, but so I've always been really, really curious, but that curiosity, but at the same time with the no self-awareness took me down a really toxic path as well. And I hit a rock bottom with drugs and all of that when I, I literally thought I was going to die and I prayed and it was a prayer like, you know, I was raised Christian and I had really veered far away from that. And then, you know, at this darkest hour when I literally thought I was going to die, I prayed and I said, like, I can't believe this is what I've done to my life. And, um, you know, God, if you give me a second chance right now, I promise I will turn my life around. I will never turn, take drugs again. And I will just, I will be a different person. And I will thank you for everything you've given me. Mm. And from that night just started changing my life. And, and I would just like delve into the personal development books and, and all of that, because I knew I was so much more than what I had become, you know, but I think you don't need to have that really dark moment or for you to have had those like failed relationships. I don't think we have to have like, everybody's waiting for like that really hard time to do the work. You can start, start deep diving now. You don't yeah to wait for it to be so painful that it's unbearable like don't do that <laughs> yeah, yeah that we don't recommend it I don't recommend it I feel like you can you can be kind of like okay with your life and still say I want so much more for myself and so I'm gonna start like looking within yeah yeah because I think for us we kind of had to discover it on our own because I guess like with for me I didn't learn from my parents my parents didn't do the work so yeah, me doing the work for myself now I know that I can pass on all those knowledge and and use better languages around my kids because I've done the work and I'm so careful about how they're, they're brought up and I'm sure you're the same as well right absolutely yeah. and, and same like I didn't have any example of you know, from my mom, she was a beautiful person. She is a beautiful person, but you know, she definitely had a lot of like limiting beliefs and she was like really old school. And so I didn't get any of that from her. I had to like really find it out for myself. And one of the things is that we need to understand is like our children actually come more evolved than us. They already come in with like a higher knowing. So like we, like you and I are already more evolved than our parents just by the nature that we we're born later. So we're already more evolved. And for us as parents to give a really good example to our kids, it, it's our responsibility to, to do the work, to, 
to like work on ourselves, not from like, oh, I'm broken, but from like, I deserve better and my children deserve better. And yeah, I think if we can set the example for our little kids, for our children, they're going to just flourish in it because they already came in knowing half of this stuff. Like my daughter, I swear sometimes stuff she says to me is embarrassing because <laughs> I'm very open with her. Like I tell her when I make mistakes, if I yell and I really regret, it, I'm like, Aaliyah, you know, I'm really sorry. You always deserve to be treated with love and respect. I'm really sorry. You know, mommy makes mistakes and I made a mistake. So yesterday I was getting frustrated with her because I was trying to put the baby down and she was like screaming. Going like, I'm like, Aaliyah, just go into bed. And she's like, mommy, you make mistakes. You make mistakes. So she, <laughs> she uses it against me. <laughs> yeah, she uses it against me, but she gets it. She yeah. gets my humanness, but she gets my humility and she gets that I'm doing my best. So I think we need to, yeah, just be that example for our kids. And if you don't have kids, be that example. Just be that example anyway. Be that example for your family, for your coworkers. Just be that example. And, and people really do recognize it when you have done the work. Like when I started doing the work on myself, I was working in corporate and I was not even going for the promotions and they were happening for me. I wasn't even going for them because when you become more as a being, when you grow yourself internally like you don't have to work as hard on the outside to get the things you want they come to you with a lot more ease and flow yeah okay so we talk about the work and we've covered kind of like past childhood kind of trauma or, or really understanding how we were raised up and whether it was being affected and you also mentioned limiting beliefs what other things would you say is part of the work the work to me is just and and I'm, a lot of people really don't like that word healing. I want to say it, healing because there's this belief that comes along with it. Like, oh, if I need to be healed, that means that I'm broken. Mm. And if you look at it as just like life maintenance like things are going to happen, like, like with your car, like you don't just keep driving, you take it in and get it serviced. So it's like your personal servicing. So it's all those things of healing first, those, those, those childhood wounds. Cause if anybody has gone to therapy knows that any challenge we have now, like the, the highest chance of it is stemmed from your childhood. So doing that work first and doing the work in the present. So doing that emotional work. So I do a lot on emotional intelligence and that's really, really important to heal that, the inner child and then work on the emotional intelligence of the person in front of you. So who I am now. So I'm going to work on the emotional intelligence of me. And I think the, and then healing the, the people around you and you heal the people around you by you just healing yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't need to actually try to like heal your husband you will heal him. If we're talking to women, you will heal him from you stepping into your divine feminine by being okay with yourself, being gentle with yourself, be holding space for him. You don't need to solve his problems. You hold space for him. You see him in his highest light as the evolved and the king of your life. You see him like that and then you heal him. Same with your children. If we stop seeing our children as these like damaged or disobedient or, you know, like crazy children, we heal them by looking at them and recognizing them for the divine little beings that they are for the teachers and, and spiritual leaders that they are. And, and that's how, that's how I see um, the healing work. So yeah, I think it's healing the child in the, in the past, working on your emotional intelligence and all of the skill sets that you need right now to be a highly functioning being. Yeah is is to me what the work is yeah yeah and i really think the work you need help so like for example for the last 10 years when i got into personal development um i really valued coaching you know getting life coaching uh, and and even for the past few years i've had the same life coach who i chat to i talk to and it's like i'm not even broken but i like to continue to not be broken if you know what i mean so i want to the audience to kind of know how can they get help from someone like yourself? Cause you're, you know, you're the coach, you've got that experience and you're passionate about this. And I, I highly recommend people seeking the help. Other, otherwise you kind of don't know where to turn to and, and then you kind of jump off the wagon with that. So yeah, talk to us more about your program and things. 
So we're on like Instagram, Facebook, and marciamiyaki.com. And so you can reach out to us. We always online. So feel free to reach out to us if you have any issues. But what, I wanted to pick up on what you said. You've been working with a coach for 10 years and you said, and I'm not broken. That's exactly it. You don't need to be broken. We, we need to recognize that we are at the same time, simultaneously, a masterpiece and a work in progress. And when you can be okay with this dichotomy, uh, and life is full of these dichotomies, if you can be okay with that, then you can really start stepping into your journey of personal development without this, this yucky feeling. Like you don't, it doesn't need to feel yucky, like you're, you're like healing all this shit. And, and know that your healing is your responsibility. We all have stuff to, to heal. Cause a lot of times I get clients who are like, well, I really want to, you know, attract the right relationship. That's the only area that I have a challenge with, but like, otherwise I'm good. I have no wounding. I'm going to call BS on that because we all do. That's just part of the human experience. You are not tainted because you've had trouble in your background or anything like that. That is just part of the human experience. So the work that I do is twofold. So I work with executives to really help them succeed in their career. And then I also work with women who are, a lot of them are corporate women that are trying to now find a balance in their balance. I say balance in air quotes because there's no such thing, who now want to have the fulfilling personal life, want to attract the partner and all of that. So we help them to step into their power. We have a 12 week program. It was an eight week program. We bulked it up and it's a 12 week program. And it really takes women on this journey to heal their inner child, help them step into their power, build their emotional intelligence, step into and embody their feminine energy, love their body, and really attract the life that they truly deserve. Yeah, that's so amazing. I really, really love it. So yeah, do check you out. You're everywhere, right? On Instagram, LinkedIn, yes. everything else. Exactly. <laughs> we also at Empowering Women for Success as well on Instagram. Cool, cool. All right. Well, I have two questions before I, I let you go. I could sit here and talk to you all day. We kind of share everything the same. Yeah. And I actually was really tempted to get into spirituality, which is another big kind of thing, but I will have to save that another day. Okay. So my question for you, since this is a kind boss podcast is what does a kind boss mean to you? A kind boss. Well, I've been really fortunate to have kind bosses basically all my life. A kind boss is someone who loves themselves and who can genuinely love those around them. So a kind boss is someone who recognizes that business is business, but businesses can't work without their people and that people come first and business actually comes second. And when you treat your people in your business, right. And you treat your customers, right. Your business will take care of itself that we need to step away from this like really autocratic leadership where it's, you know, like very hierarchical and, you know, the leader is here and the, the other people are, are down here. And, you know, I think we need to recognize that they're, we're all leaders. Everyone within like a kind boss recognizes they're all their teams are leaders and creates more leaders yeah. within their team. Love that. That was so well articulated. And to me, yeah, the kind boss, it's anyone who dares to go out and pursue their own dreams. And even if they are a freelancer or anything, they are a, a boss, the boss of their life. So it doesn't mean that you have to have team, but it's just, yeah, we're willing to, to yeah, become a leader in, in whatever area you're in. So my last question is, what do you want the world to remember you for? It's so funny because like I ask a very similar question and I like, <laughs> and I'm always, you know, I think what I would like people to know me for is that I'm just a loving person, that I'm a genuine person and that I'm loving and that I genuinely care. And from a place of caring, I've created a community to help women really step into their power, really get to know themselves and really unapologetically go into the world as their highest self so that they can be 
a better mother, wife, businesswoman, artist, whatever. So that's what I would love to be remembered yeah. for. Yeah, and it's beautiful because you're already doing that right now and you just have to keep doing that. So Yay. thank you so much, Marcia, for being on my show. It was my pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for joining our podcast today. We hope this interview has inspired and humbled you to be a kind boss. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and let us know what you think about our show. If you have any questions, please visit OutsourcingAngel.com. Until then, stay kind and spread love.